Dear students, welcome back. You learned about secondary sources. Today we are going to show you how secondary sources are presented, usually in tables and charts, and how you should read those tables and charts. We will also look at the questions asked usually using tables and charts and what are expected in those questions. The first thing that you should remember is do not rush at the figures. Usually when you find a table or a chart, you tend to rush and look at the figures and get confused. But follow the steps I'm going to indicate. You should not have problems. Let us look at how to read a table. I will take an example of a table and illustrate the technique of reading tables. First thing first, the first thing you should look at is at the title. It tells you what the table is about. This table you see on the screen is about questionnaire survey measuring well-being in UK. In other words, it's the result of a questionnaire where they conducted a survey to find out how people feel about themselves in UK. It says source A. Very often in the examination, examiners says refer to source A or refer to source B. When there's only one chart also the right source A, it means the chart which is there presented to you. Source A and source B, sometimes they say source A for the first chart, source B for the second chart. Or if it is source A only, it means there is only one chart. After you have looked at the title, you look at the heading. Here the heading says, it provides information on people aged 16 and above in Great Britain. So you know who it is about or what it is about. There may be additional information in the heading. Here you look again at the column headings. What each column in the table indicate. I have reproduced it for you for clarity. First column socioeconomic group and the next three columns they have indicated the monitoring questions they asked. So the first question was, how satisfied are you with life? Second question, how happy were you yesterday? And third question, how anxious were you yesterday? So these are indicated in the column headings. Next, you look at the column stub. Now what is the stub? Maybe you come across this word for the first time. It is the vertical column at the far left of the table. It indicates the marital status, the household size and the economic activity of the people. And all these are further detailed in the rows. For instance, married, civil partnership, cohabitation, single, widow, divorce, separated or former civil partner, one uh, person household, two or more person, in employment, unemployed, economically inactive. All these are indicators of what are found in the rows. You understand now what we mean by the stub. Still, before you start looking at the figures, look at any additional information in the note, usually at the bottom of the table. Here, it tells you how to interpret the figures. The scale starts from 0, which refers to not at all, to 10, which refers to completely. In other words, if somebody indicates something close to 10, the person is giving a high rating or if a person indicates something close to zero he or she is giving a low rating. Now it is finally time to look at the data one by one 
And to understand the data, you should match the row with the header. The first data tells us that the level of satisfaction among married or civil partners, their level of satisfaction is on the header. The married or civil partnership is on this tab. And if you match these, you see the figure 7.7, .7, which is quite high, being close to 10. In other words, people who are in marriage relationship or civil partnership have a high level of satisfaction, close to 10. I would advise you still not to worry so much about the figures. Why? It's better to look at the questions asked and then you refer to the specific figures which you are asked to explain in the question because most often the questions will not be about all the figures you see in the table. I hope you understand now why I told you to not rush at the figures and to follow the steps indicated. The questions might also be based on other types of charts, bar charts, line charts, pie charts. So let's have a look at each one of them. Let's look at how to read a bar chart. Looking first at the title, we understand that this chart, this bar chart, is about hearing loss and mobility issues grouped by age. The age categories are indicated in color blue for 70 to 79 years and in red for 80 to 100 years old. All these are found at the top of the chart. And then you look at the axis. The y-axis shows the percentages from 0 to 100 and the x-axis indicates either hearing loss or mobility issues. Now you understand what the chart is about and then you look at the questions to know exactly what you should be looking at in the chart. Let's look at another example of a little more complicated chart. It looks quite bulky with a lot of figures, lots of bars. But what does the title say? The title Percentage of children aged 0 to 4 years living with a mother who experienced any physical, sexual or emotional violence by a husband or partner during the past 12 months. In other words, it is looking at what percentage of children stay with the mother and the mother is experiencing some sort of violence at the hand of the ex of the husband and it speaks about the previous past 12 months. Then you look at the x-axis at the bottom which shows the percentage from 0 to 55. And then you look at the y-axis on the left hand side which shows the names of the countries. Afghanistan right at the top with the highest incidence of violence and Armenia right at the bottom with the lowest incidence. Then you go and look at the questions the examiner is asking so as to know which figures you should look at more carefully. Let us now look at how to read a pie chart. Look at the heading. It says what it is about. The caption is when I shop at the airport it's usually. In other words, when do people shop at the airport? Then look at the color code. 
at the bottom of the chart. Each color signifies something. Red is heading to a destination. Violet is on my way home. Orange is both. In other words, the red shows that people do shopping while heading to some place. Violet, they do shopping while coming back home. And orange, they do shopping both on the way up and down. Next, you look at the percentages on the chart indicated by each color. Obviously, the next thing you have to see are the questions asked and which specific information you should look at in the chart. The last chart we'll look at is the line chart. What are line charts? Have a look at this chart. You see the figures and the graphs indicating the different changes which we call the line chart. You look at the heading first. It says motor vehicle crash death in US. And then there's another heading which says total death. So you should understand that this is about motor vehicle crash and the total death in USA. Then the next thing you look at the Y axis. It says numbers in K. That is numbers in thousand, seven and fifteen and, and so on. The figures are indicated. There are additional set of information provided. So there are additional parameters. On the right hand side, you will see the vehicles miles traveled in billions indicated. In other words, if you take all the vehicles together and if you see how many miles each one has traveled and total together, you will get the vehicles miles traveled is given in billion because there are many vehicles and you total together it will come to a lot. And by looking at this you will understand uh, how many billions of miles the vehicles have traveled and at which point the accident occur. We are not going to go into all these details but just to indicate to you that this is an additional parameter expressed in billions. You should be cautious about one additional factor. Whenever you are asked to give a reply which has figures, look also at the units linked with the figures. For instance, when you see 10k, 5k, 15k, your answer should be 10,000, 5,000, 15,000 because the k indicates 1,000. On the right hand side, when you are given a figure 1000 and whatever it is, it says billion. So when you are answering the question, you look at the figures carefully and you explain, you say for example 636,030 billion or 318,018 billion. Do not forget the unit used. If you just say 636,030 it won't be proper because the figures show billion and it has been indicated there traveled in billion. On the other side it says K in other words in thousand. Here also you look at the questions now and then you decide which figure you should try to understand and explain. So ne you need not worry about all the figures presented in this chart. Let us now look at the type of questions you will get on figures and charts and tables and so on. I won't be giving you specific questions but I will look at the structure of questions. Usually the questions asked uh, what is meant by, describe to, explain how, explain why, to what extent. 
you should understand the nature of the question and what is expected of you in a question which says what is meant by it is more of a knowledge question which is expecting you to give a definition and this question usually carries only two marks a simple definition the question which says describe two carry four marks it's an understanding question and you're supposed to give examples a question which says explain how usually carries six marks it's an analysis question where you're supposed to elaborate with examples compare differentiate a question which says explain why carries eight marks and it is an interpretation question where you're expected to give reasons why and justify and finally the question to what extent carries 15 marks and this is an evaluation question here you have to give examples and arguments to agree examples and arguments to disagree with a proper introduction and a conclusion remember the previous lesson where I taught you how to answer a 15 marks question it applies here also so these are the type of question you will get using secondary data such as charts and tables and all these things we have now reached the end of this lesson let us now recapitulate what we did we looked at uh, how to read a table how to understand various types of charts bar chart pie chart and line chart we also look at the types of questions asked and what is expected of each question in the next lesson we we'll try to wind up with this chapter on research methodology it was nice talking to you we'll see you very soon and for today it's goodbye